Okay, hey guys, and it's PSL here, and I'm here for the 21st part in the Minardi Magic Career Mode, where we are about to have, well, the San Marino or Imola Grand Prix. Um, but obviously, that is in two weeks' time, I believe. So, you know, Joe, by now, we got to see um, any news that pops up between now and then. Um, so, I'll see you guys then. Okay, so, hey guys, so we have had some news. And there's that BR Petrobus there, um, sponsorship deal has run out now. I know for a fact, because I've just had a quick look, um, BR Petrobus, not the most glamorous or well-known sponsor, so I'm going to decline them. And hopefully, I hope this works, if I go onto sponsors, as you can see, we're only getting 770 grand a race at the minute from PlayStation and Fraser. But hopefully, if you look here, I had a quick look, um, and Red Bull... Hopefully, well, if you look here, Red Bull's one of the glamorous sponsors um, remaining that hasn't uh, sponsored anyone yet. I mean, everyone else is just pretty... Well, Champion. Now, I can get Champion, but I won't be able to get Red Bull as well because it's too... um. There's not enough ad space, basically. But I would love to get Champion, so it'd be pretty cool to have Champion on the car. Um, but yeah, no, we're going to get Red Bull, because obviously Red Bull... Um, when they ran their own team, well, okay, not not this season, but um, but not too long ago, um, obviously 2010 to 2013, were pretty dominant. So hopefully, we can um, hopefully Red Bull as a sponsor can give us some of that dominance. I'm hoping, well, just the fact that Red Bull generally on the car would look a lot better than um, BR Petrobus would on the car. So hopefully. Red Bull, more glamorous sponsor, can um, get us a glamour and hopefully that domination which um, they have had when they've run an F1 team. And now it's taken a long time to run to load the news, so I think it's just going to be lots of sponsorship information that comes up, because normally that takes a bit longer to load um, than the standard news. Yeah, this is all sponsors. Well, hang on, AP, Racing Brakes, Rumour for Arrows, yada, yada, yada. It's all sponsor stuff, which I never really pay much attention to, because at the end of the day, I don't give a damn. Uh, oh no, we couldn't have had champions, they stay committed to Salva. Uh, but then, if I was champion, push come to shove, push come to shove, I'd rather sponsor Minardi than uh, Salva. And that's it. And I just want to see, before I cut away, because I'm sure it'll be soon when um, Red Bull reply to our email. Here we go, and yes, they are offering... Um, to sponsor our car, I mean, same terms of 700 grand a race for 16 races. So, same terms as BR Petrobus, but, um, obviously, yeah. And if you look at this remaining ad space, because we may have given PlayStation extra ad space, um, there's literally only 700,000 left, um, to give Red Bull. So, all of our ad space is taken up, but we did give PlayStation, I believe, 140 grand free ad space. But hopefully this should make our car look good with Red Bull dressed all over it. Uh, yeah, that looks right. You can hardly see it, though. Now we're going to put it all down the sides of the car. I think that looks okay so far. And um, what have I done? As you see, it's going along down the bottom now. And then the big one all across the rear wing. Um, yeah, it's plastered Red Bull. Look, Red Bull there. Red Bull there, Red Bull all of there. And bearing in mind, think about it, um, our driver's overalls are covered in um, Red Bull sponsorship. Yeah, we're we're heavily backed by Red Bull. It's basically Red Bull and PlayStation. I mean, what more do you need in life than Red Bull and PlayStation? So there you go. I think our car's looking pretty good. And there you go. I'll cut away to any more news as and when it comes. So I'll see you guys then. Okay, so hey guys. So we have got some... News, it's just arrows are going to be using AP brakes, which are the best brakes in the game, or joint best, and I think they're using them already, so good for them, but nothing too exciting. It's just, you know, arrows, they've got one, one good component in the car, um, and that's that, and then two, what's that, uh, Patronus, I'm guessing that's Malaysian Patronus, obviously Mercedes sponsors, think about sponsoring BAR, and then we got this, news of Red Bull backing us. So there you go, and yeah, as I say, I'll cut to any more news as and when it comes. So I'll see you guys then.
Okay, so hey guys, so we have got some more news. It's that Neil Oatley because he is a workaholic, seemingly, because he, he's done tons of aero stuff for us already this season, but now he's produced a new model of front wing, um, the fourth model of front wing already, and we haven't even done the third race, it's amazing, and the third model of rear wing, so let's get to manufacturing that. Let's get rid of the third model, which was rated 93 at the minute, um, and now the next one's rated 94, so... Slight improvement, but think about when you consider that's on two components of the car. Um, that's a fairly big improvement for us from one race to the next. So, yeah, good on Neil Oatley, design more stuff for us. Um, yeah, and as, as I say, I'll cut some more news as and when it comes. So I'll see you then. Okay, so we have got some more news, and BAR are using... Oh, Patronus, oh, right, okay. I thought it meant Malaysia, Malaysian Patronus as in the sponsor. No, it's Patronus Engines. Um, but BAR have announced they're going to be using them next year, which is not that exciting of an announcement. They're pretty mediocre engines, from what I can remember. So yeah, that's interesting. And I believe it's just one more day, two more days to the race, actually. So Stuart may be using Peugeot engines, which again, well, that would be a bad move, actually. I believe they're the second worst in the game. So that would be a bad move. And no, that's it. So that's... um. Yeah, that's it. So, Imola Grand Prix coming up, an amazing race. Um, well, it was last year. It was a very exciting race last year. And if you guys can't remember the race that we did in 1999, then be sure to check that video out, because, I mean, I know it's a long video, but if you can't remember, then honestly, that was a great race, so you should definitely check out that video and watch it. Or, if you don't want to do that, then you can check out my um, Season 1 montage. So, we got a montage over the entire 1999 season, um, which includes highlights to all the races, including the Imola race. So you could check out that video, and there'll be a YouTube card thing at the top of the screen, and I'll also put the link to that video in the description. So you could watch out that video, just in case you forgot what happened in Imola in 1999. But basically, maiden points for Minardi, well, under my managerial period with Minardi, that was my maiden points uh, managing Minardi. It was Takaki's maiden points, it was Arrow's maiden points of the season. It was a pretty big race. Um, and Takaki outpaced us, outscored us. It was one of the few times when Arrow's outpaced us. Because at the start of the season, Arrow's were actually quicker than us. And then carved the end of that seat. And then by the end of the season, thanks to Gabriel Tradozzi's, um design and Ford Z-Tech engines. And Magneti Morello Electronics, it kind of faded away really. But um, yeah, hope we, I don't think we'll have to worry about Arrow's this race. But we have got to worry about... Or pressing issues, um, but it should be a very interesting race. You saw it last season, it was brilliant. And now let's head on to the qualifying report or any interesting practice news for the 2000 Imola Grand Prix. Okay, so hey guys, so no practice report, but obviously practice um, results. And there's a there's a few talking points really I want to talk about. Um, both Schumacher's on the front row. Well, obviously this is only practice, but. If that was qualifying, there'd be both Schumacher's on the front row. Um, Takaki would still outpace us. Um, it's the first time, I believe, ever. Okay, it's definitely the first time ever we've outpaced a Ferrari. Um, it's one of the few times we've outpaced a McLaren um, on true pace, because both Mikasalo and Damon Hill set laps on hold position. So this is true pace here. Um, and another thing, the gap between Damon Hill and Mikasalo is so big because Damon Hill was running on more fuel um, for this stint because I forgot to lower his fuel intake. But um, lots of talking points. Fizzy Keller's done badly in comparison to his teammate. Uh, De La Rosa's right the way down and behind Genet. It's interesting to us. It's quite eye-opening. Um, but I think the key thing really is how Takaki's still faster than us. But... Yeah, so that's practice um, results, and I'll head you on to the properly formal qualifying report now. Okay, so we've just had the qualifying session for the 2000 San Marino Grand Prix, and it's just ended, so I'll take you through the results now. So, first place was Michael Schumacher in the Ferrari, and Ferrari's dominant season, and especially Michael Schumacher's dominant season, 
seems to be carrying on. It doesn't seem to be a fluke because this is the third race in a row where he's been completely dominant because he set a qualifying lap over three seconds a lap faster than the person in second place, which was Mika Salo in the Mercedes-Benz engine Minardi. And Mika Salo has done very well to get so high up the grid and has exceeded all expectations that we ever had for Minardi at the start of the season and has beaten the other dominant Ferrari, although by the much less experienced EA employee, because that is Neil McEwen and the other Ferrari, and his lack of experience and his lack of laps he did in qualifying seem acceptable excuses for his third place in qualifying, especially as he's going up against a much more experienced and a much more highly rated teammate, and so there's bound to be a massive gap. Fourth was Damon Hill and the other Minardi, who isn't quite living up to what his teammate did, with there being only four tenths of a gap between Damon Hill and Mika Salo, is still all to play for in the inter-team battle at Minardi. Ralph Schumacher isn't able to capitalise on his practice pace as he's down in fifth, but it's still a very good result for the Williams, and David Coulthard in the Benetton, finishing sixth. Now, Giancarlo Fisichello is the highest placed McLaren in seventh, Jean Lacy is 8th in the Benetton, with Heinz Held Frentzen 9th in the Jordan. Takaki is 5 places outside of his teammate's position and is way down in 10th and is nowhere near where he was in practice. Similarly, Johnny Herbert is quite away from his teammate as he's down in 11th, with Runes Barrichello in 12th. Eddie Irvine is the highest placed Stuart driver in 13th, with the 97 world champion Jacques Villeneuve in 14th. Alexander Wurtz is 15th. Jarno Trulli is having a disappointing season as he qualifies in 16th for this race. Both pros are doing terribly with Ricardo Zonta in 17th and Pedro Diniz in 8th. Laurent Madon is 19th in the BAR. Both arrows are 20th and 21st with Pedro De Rosa 20th and Marc Genet 21st. And last by quite a way, by over 4 seconds a lap, is Zanardi and Zanardi was not very highly rated from many people last season, such as the Minardi manager Pierce Luton rules. Rose Zanardi being the number one driver at Williams last year and has now moved down to a much lower team with a much less highly rated teammate, but is still finishing eight seconds a lap behind his teammate in the exact same car is atrocious for a driver like Zanardi and this could signal the end of his career in F1. Okay, so hey guys, so that was the qualifying report there. We had an amazing qualifying session, but one thing is, is that we never did practice all qualifying on the new front or rear wings, and one thing I just want to point out why, is because um, while Neil Oakley designed the fourth model of front wing and rear wing, um, and we told our guys to manufacture it, they couldn't manufacture um, more parts in time, so there's still only one model of both the front wing and rear wing, so... If we use it now in the race, um, our speed will be compromised because if you change the parts on the car then it can actually change the optimum setup. So we're going to have to leave off that new front and rear wing until the next race and just refit with the same parts. I mean obviously, just a reminder, the chassis is the thing that's letting us down badly this year because um, while the engine's highly rated and the electronics and the brakes um, are highly rated and all the best um, in their fields, the chassis which is a Gabriel Trudosi chassis, so his, so his legacy in Minardi still lives on. Unfortunately, it's not a positive legacy, as it's um, his chassis is only rated 91, whereas by comparison, the Oatly chassis, when it's done, will be rated either 99 or 100. So that's what's letting us down this season, but we still qualified very high up, considering we've had, a, well, we got a very poor chassis. Um, then we've just got the race strategy set up, um, a very high... Um, fuel lap what am i saying it needs a lot of fuel it's um very um fuel draining well i can't i can't think of the right way to say it but it's you know you need a lot of fuel to get around Imola apparently according to mike gascoigne um but yeah that's the strategy mikasalo ping in the lap later yep but obviously mikasalo qualified um higher up so maybe we should put damon hill on the um not as optimum strategy but whatever Mika Salo in the Red Bull PlayStation Minardi says he's first. That's obviously rubbish. It's just a glitch in the game. But can he get past Michael Schumacher at the start? And there's a massive gap from 
um, the first grid slot to the second grid slot, seemingly. But, um, we're coming up to the first corner, and it looks like it's been a pretty standard start. I don't think anybody actually changed positions there. Neil McCune is still in third and is bearing down on Mikasalo, but I'm sure Mikasalo can handle the pressure of Neil McEwen. And Damon Hill, now Damon Hill is piling on the pressure onto Neil McEwen. Obviously, if we can get both Minardis in the podium, then that will be a blistering job. Unlike, um, well, see, last season we saw Minardi, um, we got a point, but um, Mark Genet retired out. Drive, was it a driver error? I cannot remember what the time it was, but Mark Genet retired. Um, and we really don't want to see a car retire. Um, especially this race is... Damon Hill, was... did he make an overtake there? I saw that. Was that an overtake on Neil McEwen? I was saying, you know, this race was um, kind to us last year. Now, can Damon Hill force his way past the more inexperienced driver? And no, he was just cut off there. But Damon Hill was fighting very hard behind um, by Neil McEwen. I, I know an F1 YouTuber who's going to be very happy to see Damon Hill fighting hard um up there and I'm sure lots of other people will be happy to see the Brit of Damon Hill fighting up and trying to prove a point. I mean I think he already has proven a point. He's I mean he's a former world champion but you know he's still got a point to prove um in his mind anyway and what's this and McLaren McLaren's have had a dreadful they've all moved out the way for him. Even Damon Hill moved out the way for that McLaren then. That was Atrocious. I don't want to see Damon Hill just moving out of the way. I know it's a McLaren driver and it's probably Giancarlo Fisichella. And sure, I would give Fisichella some respect, especially as, in, as he's in the McLaren. But I wouldn't just slide out of the way for him. Uh, what is going on? TV cameras going messed up. I'm going to leave that. Um, but Mikasala is still in first. Damon Hill was showing some promise. One thing I do don't want to check. Both of our drivers are on hold position. Good, because I don't want driver errors to... um decide this race, hang on, Damon Hill, is he going to make a move on, no, no, whoa, wrong thing, cool. I just want to see, he's getting close to Neil McEwen, now we have an on-board camera, I know I normally cut away at this point, but, no, he's not that close, look at the Red Bull, look at, if anybody tunes into the TV and sees the on-board camera, they're going to have a face full of Red Bull sponsorship, um, so I bet you Red Bull will be happy with that, um, is he going to make a move down here? He made a move down here last lap. Come on. He's done it, has he? Neil, yes. So, Damon Hill has got past Neil McEwen into third place. So, both Minardis are in podium positions. And let's see if Damon Hill um, can catch up to Mick Asalo. With the gap's three and a half seconds, boss, he was held up by Neil McEwen. Um, but, yeah, that was brilliant. Accelerate time. So, both Minardis in the podium, running in the podium for the first time ever in my managerial career with him. And now... David Coulthard's got past Damon Hill. Is he going to get past Mikasalo? Not at the minute. Mikasalo seems to be holding him off. And Damon Hill's slipping down the order here. Fizikella's has got past, but... You know, I mean, everybody seems to be moving out of the way for Fizikella. And now David Coulthard's into second. Oh, it's just like the 99 season when David Coulthard was just behind Schumacher, really. Um, but obviously, I'm um, in much different cars. Um, you're on a truly driver error in the Stewarts. I'm sure that's something neither Trulli nor Stuart want to see. I mean, Michael Schumacher's out of a driver error. We have now got a very good chance of actually winning this. Okay, no, we don't. I was going to say we got a good chance of winning this race, but we don't because Ralph Schumacher's got past us. Where is Takaki, speaking of which? Tenth. So he's seven places behind his teammate. Oh, he's five places now behind wherever. Um, but what thing I was going to say, so Jana Trulli, he never scored any points last year with the Prost. Um... And Prost didn't score any points last year, so I'm sure he'd be gutted to be way down the field um, in the Stewart. He moved to Stewart in the hopes of going up the field, and Stewart seemed to be really underperforming. Although it is a driver error, so maybe... Ralph Schumacher's have an engine failure. Oh, that's gutting, actually. He was much better than his teammate. He was, he was what was he, like, third or fourth? But that, either way, that... It's massively helpful to us. Mick, uh, Mick Asal is now in third. Damon Hill just outside the points. Positions in seventh. And Damon Hill in sixth. Good. That, so we got two cars running in the points. And I'll tell you what would be gutting. It would be truly gutting if one of our... If we had driver errors or... You know, if we were... If we succumbed to the high attrition rate of um, Imola. I mean, both of our drivers are on 
whole position. I might turn down to ease ev um, ease off or ease everything come the end of the race. Um, Takaki, if in ninth, he was in fifth for a split second. I'm guessing he's now in for a pit stop. So that's strategy. Thing. Both Ferraris are out. Barge or failure um, for Neil McHugh in there, and both of our drivers are go. Oh no, pit stops course. Um, make a in fourth. Ruins back. Keller's got past us in the Jordan. Uh, Takaki's out with a driver error. T he's really not proving himself yet. Mikasalo. Right, okay, okay. We're in contention for our first ever race win at Minardi. And Mikasalo's catching up at a rapid rate. 46 seconds. Mikasalo's leading. Mikasalo is leading here. Uh, by... Look how few cars there are on that radar. So what are we talking? Salo... Oh, who's threatening here? Well, there's a couple of Jordans. There's Fizz. That's Herbert, actually, not Fizzy Keller. Let's. Okay, so time slowed down. So let's look at the sticks here. So Runes Bad Colors in second. Damon Hill only six seconds behind, seven seconds now. Hopefully he can catch up. Johnny Herbert just behind them. Obviously, with that Neil, McC uh, Neil Oatley um, design chassis, um, which we haven't got the benefits of yet because we don't have it yet, but McLaren still do. Johnny Herbert could easily catch up. Um, but Mikasalo, I'm now I'm thinking, do I turn it down to ease ev um, ease off to minimise the chance of a driver error? But obviously, it could mean it could mean Ruins Barrichello catches up to us. You see, this is the sort of thing where if I wasn't recording for YouTube, I would just watch the rest of the race live, or at least, well, not maybe not live, but maybe like not just straight up at um, advanced time all the time. No, Bruins Bad Keller's catching up to us anyway, actually. No, I can't stick it down to ease off. Bruins Bad Keller's catching up, but hopefully there might not be enough laps for him to catch up in time, and Damon Hill's not going to catch up. Uh, seemingly not. Both of our drivers still in podium places. Bruins Bad Keller's catching up big time. Um, Heinz Alfredson's just behind, so both Jordans could actually get past us. What? What is this? The 2005 season or something? What's this? I mean, that's the only the only time ever you really see Minardi's and Jordans battling out together was in the 2005 season when they were both at the back. Um, and now, uh, <laughs> Jordans and Minardi's are battling together, but at the front. What's going on? Well, Mika Salo in first. How close is Runes Barrichello to him? Not too close, Runes Bad Color is in. Seven seconds. So that's what it looks like in the radar. Damon Hill just there, but Heinz Alfredson's close. Who's that? Is that um in the arrows? Is that Mark Chenet? Can he surely he'll want to help out his former team? Surely he will. Uh no, that's De La Rosa. No, he's not gonna feel like he wants to hold up Heinz Alfredson. Um But can we get our first race win? No, Runes Bad Color's catching up a lot. Uh, this, this is getting close, this is, this is getting, what's happened to Damon Hill there, um, um, Damon Hill's been passed by Hans Alfredson, Runes Barrichello is now only 2.8 seconds by Mikasalo, this is going to go down to the wire, but I think both Jordans are actually going to get past us, um, past the Minardis, Runes Barrichello is now 9 tenths behind us, and this is getting 2 tenths, I'm sorry, I mean, I know you guys don't really want a long video and the videos are already long, but... This, we're fighting for our first race win. I mean, the video's going to be longer, and I know I, the video's being 20 plus minutes already is ridiculous, but this, this is truly sensational stuff. The last race in uh, 1999 was sensational, but this is bloody close as well. Ruins Bad Kello thought about making a move there, and he just about hasn't, but he is bearing down on Mikasalo. Now, I'm hoping Mikasalo won't crack under pressure here because, um, Mikasalo, I mean, he's a he's a cool he's a cool ice cool finish. Um, racing driver crack under pressure just doesn't exist. Um, hang on, there are only five cars left running this race. No, they're not. It's just it's just oh, it's just Vertz's multiple laps behind. Okay. Um, that is scary. -o. So we've got two laps left of Imola to do. Probably the most brutal track ever in F1, or at least one of the most brutal tracks ever in F1. And we've got to hold off um, a chasing and much quicker Runes Barrichello. See, what we have got on our side, um, as we cut to Damon Hill, what we have got on our side is the Mercedes-Benz engine, which has got 
massive performance. It's the best engine there is at this time. Unlike um, Jordan, who are using the Ford ZTEC engines, um, which are the worst at a time. But obviously, Jordan have a much better chassis. Um, they've got a very good pairing for drivers, actually. Um, obviously, as Heinz Alfredson has got past his former teammate. Um, and I cannot remember whether Heinz Alfredson outscored Damon Hill in 99, both in real life and um, in the F1 manager season. And is that Damon Hill? It has to be, because it's not Mick Asalo, Because if, there, if it's Mick Asalo, we'd have a yellow Jordan just bearing down on us. Three tenths behind runes bad color is. And I know this is going to make a long video. I'm very sorry about that, guys. But I'm sure you can appreciate that this is a bloody exciting race. And if we get our first ever race win due to Schumacher retiring. Well, both Schumachers retiring. Takaki retiring. Um, uh, Neil McEwen retiring. David Coulthard retiring. Both McLarens just seemingly being nowhere. If we can get our first race win... This is going to be amazing. And we started the final lap here. Damon Hill is now 9.4 seconds behind. He's, well, he's 9.4 seconds behind Heinz Alfrentz. And he's about two laps ahead of Alexander Wurtz in fifth. So, surely, we're going to get our first ever win for Minardi. And I, I really, I want to watch Mika Salo. I don't, I mean, I love Damon Hill. But really, right now, my attention is firmly on Mika Salo And whether he can hold out, um... Bruno Barrichello for the remainder of this race. Well, for the remainder of the lap, that's all he's got. Now, I vaguely know the Imola track, and I think we're near... The, yes, we are near the end. This is, I believe, the last sector of the track. But Bruno Barrichello is looking very feisty behind us. Now, you see, this is what I mean by sometimes F1 manager is brilliant to watch. Like, as if it's a real-life race. Sometimes it actually genuinely is brilliant to watch. Um... And that's why I have considered doing like special videos where we watch an entire race live start to finish. And Ruse Barrichello. Oh my god, Mikasalo just covered him off there. Very late um, defending move there, but Mikasalo's just defended Ruse Barrichello. And don't tell me we're going to come through. Don't tell me we're going to have our first win for Minardi at the 2000 San Marino Grand Prix. And Mikasalo, he's going to win as he won. Mick Asalo crosses the line to win the 2000 Imola Grand Prix. Rubens Barrichello is in second. Now Heinz Alfredson, I'm guessing, is still in third. Heinz Alfredson has crossed the line in third. That just means Damon Hill. Um, he's going to cross the line soon. Yes, he's coming through the last couple of corners. This last came, And he's going to get fourth place. Not quite what we're hoping for, the former world champion. But Damon Hill crosses the line in fourth in the 2000 San Marino Grand Prix. So... What? I mean, I don't know what to say. We've exceeded all expectations for, like anyone had. Actually, I do think someone, one of my subscribers, said um, in a couple of parts ago that he did expect a couple of wins from Minardi. Well, and I think I said, I think I commented back saying, you're a bit ambitious there. Um, but no, I mean, a quarter of a second ahead of Runs by Color. They were clearly faster, but Mick Asalo first. I mean, if you look at the quickest cars that race, we were the fifth. Is it quickest cars? Well, actually, no. Heinz Alfredson runs by Kelly. Set laps slower than us, but I'm guessing come the end of the race, I'm not going to bother to check. They were quicker than us. Well, obviously, they were. They caught up several seconds in a few laps. Um, brilliant race. So, so just a reminder, results for the 2000 San Marino Grand Prix. Mick Asalo first. Bruins Barrichello second. Heinz Alfredson first. Damon Hill fourth. Sean Lacey fifth and Alexander Wurtz. Oh, it was Lacey who was fifth actually, but um, Alexander Wurtz in sixth. Now, Pedro de la Rosa almost replicated what um, Takaki did, but he finished seventh this race. Um, Zanardi engine failure. Who else here? Coulthard uh, ran out of fuel. That's pretty gutting. That's not really even a car failure. That's just a mess up from the Benetton team there. Fizzy Keller suspension failure. Um, Takaki driver error. Well. I I seriously thought he had some potential in him. Not anymore, I don't think that. Um, Ralph Schumacher, engine failures. That's quite gutting for him. I mean, he seemed to be one of the quickest guys out there. Schumacher, driver error, which... He was he was several seconds a lap faster than everyone else. Why was he pushing so hard? Gutting. 
for him, but brilliant for us. We've won, I think, our sixth place in the Constructors is safe, because what have we got? Ten points of winning. Um, what do we get? Three points are coming fourth, I believe. Yeah, three points are coming fourth. So we got 13 points of the Constructors. A ton of prize money. Yes, Mika Salo wins at San Marino. Um, what does it say? Yeah, everyone, including the sponsors, were very happy. Obviously, Red Bull, they sponsored for one race. The first race that they sponsored us, Red Bull, they've given us their domination. They've given us good luck. Um, but at the same time, we've given them massive press coverage. I'm sure they'll love that. So this could be the start of a good, happy partnership between Minardi and Red Bull, I think. Um, Mike Gascoigne says the part's heavily worn. I don't care right now. Neil Oatley. Jordan have the most advanced suspension. Well, we saw that they were bloody good. Um, that they have some potential in their car. And Jordan have the most advanced side pods as well. Um, yeah. And we have the most advanced front and rear wings. But we're not using them, obviously, because we didn't manufacture them. Oh, well, enough of them in time. Um, Stefano Domenicali. 3.9 million race uh, prize money. Or 3 million from winning and 900,000 from coming fourth plus the 1.4 we got from sponsorship plus the 75 grand for merchandise means we got pretty much five and a half million that race i believe around about anyway so let's have a look what what does this mean for us drivers championship mick Casalo second in the drivers championship he's second I said last race, Mick Asalo has a vague chance of the Drivers' Championship, and I, I don't think he will but win it, but, you know, he's in contention second in the Drivers' Championship. David Hill is, you know, around there. He's above Takaki, Irvine, Coulthard even, um, Neil McEwen. There you go, Constructors. We're third, so we're easily meeting our sixth-place target that we were told to achieve. Two points behind... The Giants of McLaren, only four behind um, the Giants of Ferrari, who have been dominating this season. Four points ahead of, I think, our new rivals, possibly, for this season, Jordan. Um, so, who is sixth? That's third, fourth, fifth, sixth, Benetton. So, we are nine points clear of sixth. I think we're going to be fine. I don't think I'm going to be sacked, and we've got lots of potential now. And second highest rated manager, actually, me and Jean Todd are both clearly way out in front in terms of highly rated managers. John Todd's rated very highly. I'm rated very highly as well um, in second. And everyone else is just kind of lower down, really. I mean, Frank Williams third. Um, and then, who's that? Alan Prost is in the middle. Ron Dennis in the middle. Eddie Jordan, I think that's a bit unfair on him, to be honest. He got two of his cars in the podium. While they've got the worst engines on the grid, I think it's a bit unfair for him to be down there. Paul Stewart rate the worst manager. And then look at that money. We've we've only lost nine hundred grand this season. Okay. Who's who's been our biggest expense? Oh, Damon Hill. That's what you get for having world championship status. Oh no, Mercedes Benz. Fair enough. They've massively helped us that um that race. But the next race is actually my home race, the Silverstone Grand Prix. Well no, the Silverstone Grand Prix. The British Grand Prix at Silverstone. Um, so I'm massively looking forward to that. And as you can see, I mean, look, Jordan, William, Stewart, Benetton, BAR and McLaren all based nearby. But Ferrari aren't. We aren't. And you never know. We might still do all right, even though Jordan, Williams, lots of our rivals do seem to have that kind of um, knowledge of the track and possibly an advantage over us. But, you know, I suppose we kind of had the team's second home race just then because it's San Marino which is from what I gather pretty much Italy I don't really quite know what the politics are of San Marino in Italy but it's kind of the team's second home race um so yeah I'm massively looking forward to my home race hopefully we can replicate the amazing performance we had this race of Mika Salo winning and I'll see you guys for that race be sure to let me know down in the comments what you thought of that amazing result whether you think we can replicate it at the next race or at any point um, this season. And I'm massively looking forward to this season with us in third and constructors already. It's brilliant. Um, but I'll end the video now, so I'll see you guys next time.